I guess every gamer has a list of games that one knows are very good but never have played, always delaying because there are other games. Or it's just not a typical game that you would play, or maybe it's of a specific genre that you typically don't play, etc. I also have the list. And while seeing how many people were excited about Hollow Knight Silk Song, I thought I gotta play the original Hollow Knight. And that's a game from my list. And I thought, it's time. It's time to play those legendary games, those beloved games that I have never played. And I'm gonna play them and analyze them. Are they really that good, or are they overhyped? And my first patient, as you have guessed, is Hollow Knight. And while analyzing the game, I'm going to give the answer if maybe you should play the game, if you're like me and never have played Hollow Knight. Let me drop my opinion right away. Is this game overhyped, or is it really that good? Because I don't have the nostalgia or whatever, because I've played this game recently. Yes, it really is that good. But first, let's talk about the length of the game. It took me almost 50 hours to beat the game. I expected like 10 or 12. That's the length of half of the original The Witcher 3. That's impressive. And while watching YouTube videos about the lore and the plot of the game, I saw a lot of characters and locations that I have never seen in the game. So the game is even bigger. In the midst of writing the script to this video, I discovered that there are DLCs to the game. So that's how there are locations and characters that I haven't seen. However, there are some downsides to those 50 hours, which we will talk about later. Now about the amazing gameplay. It is amazing, but before we do that, I gotta say that the game is hard. It is like 2D Elden Ring. Yes, Elden Ring specifically because it's almost an open-world game. The gameplay itself is composed of platforming and fighting, and sometimes it's both platforming and fighting. That up there, in the left corner, is your HP. That's basically the number of times that you can get hit before you die. So you're usually 4 or 5 hits away from death, so you're always skating on thin ice, even when you're full HP. And if you die, you are sent back to your last bench. Bench in this game is like Grace Bonfire in Soulsborne games, but not quite the same. We will talk about the difference later. As in Soulsborne games, mobs and bosses have their movesets, so you have to learn them to win in a fight. As in Soulsborne games, simple mobs have simple movesets and patterns, and bosses have multiple patterns and movesets. Some of the bosses are conventional bosses, that have multiple patterns. A good example for those kind of bosses are Mantis Lords. It was my favorite boss fight in the game. And there are some unconventional bosses, for example a boss like Bouncing Ball. If you try to fight it conventionally, you will lose. You shouldn't dodge or try to heal. All you need to do is stay in one place and counterattack. So you sometimes need a special tactic to win. Something like that invisible assassin boss in Elden Ring. The boss itself is not that hard to beat, it is just it is invisible, and you need a different tactic. It is ridiculous how similar Hollow Knight combat is to From Software games. Battle-wise, it is the same game formula of From Software. To know what From Software formula is, you can watch this video on my channel. And I have a bunch of interesting videos for you to check out, particularly Check out this video about the future of Bioware Studio. YouTube just straight up doesn't recommend this video. I literally had to repost the video. And subscribe to the channel. It will give you plus 5 to Kinkness. That's pretty much it about the combat. It is very good and demands flexibility and creativity from the player. I have enjoyed it a lot. However, let's get back a little and talk about the first hours of the game because they are horrible. Obviously, you start the game and learn how to play it. You learn the combat and the platforming. For me especially, the platforming part was unusual, because I don't play platformers. But don't worry, I'm not here to complain about that. What I'm going to complain about is how confusing the game is sometimes. Especially at the beginning, when I really didn't know what to do and where to go. I was completely lost. 
and one of the most frustrating thing about the game is that you don't have a map of the area at the beginning of the game. Because I don't have a map, I was so lost that I just went to look for a playthrough on YouTube to see what I'm missing and where am I supposed to go. Essentially, you need to find a bug that draws maps, and then you have to buy the map. Buying the map isn't the issue, the issue is to find the bug. On each location, the guy is located somewhere random. Usually it's very deep in the location. And only then you get the basic map that you'll have to update yourself. And one more issue is that the map is updating only when you sit on the bench. So it is not updating in real time. So when you explore a location, you are always in the dark. I get that this is intentional, but I don't like it. The thing that I hate the most in games is when a game wastes my time. So, if you're like me and you hate when a game wastes your time, you should be aware of that. However, it was worth it. The game is that good that I tolerate that fact. So, you are in the dark, you don't know where you're going. That's one way how the game is wasting your time. The other way though is how fast travel works. Remember how I said that the bench in Hollow Knight is a place like Grace Bonfire and Soulsborne games? Yeah, it is, about the resting and resurrecting, not about the fast travel. There are separate points of fast travel, and there are not a lot of them. So to travel from point A to point B is extremely frustrating, because it wastes your time. You have already been on that location, you have already defeated those foes, you just need to pass by, but you can't. The same goes when you're fighting some bosses. There are not a lot of benches in the game, and they are not placed near the boss arenas. So you sometimes need like 3 to 5 minutes to reach the boss arena. For example, the most frustrating boss path for me was the path to Mantis Traitor Lord. It took me like 30 tries to beat it, and now multiply 30 by 3, it is one and a half hour of meaningless activities. Yes, later in the game you get the ability to teleport to marked location, and without it I would not keep fighting the Mantis Traitor Lord. I have already abandoned him and returned only when I got this ability, though this ability is overpowered on my opinion. After you got this ability, you don't need to worry about the HP, because if you die, you will be very close to the place of your death. Now, it does not solve the issue when you need to reach the specific location. You still sometimes need to waste like 5 to 10 minutes to reach your destination, even though you have already cleared the map. The optimal solution would be, again, to copy from software formula and place more benches in general and more benches before boss arenas, and to add the fast travel points to benches as well. That works in Soulsborne games, that would work here. Now a little about the narrative. As in Soulsborne games, the narrative and the lore is kinda strange. You must listen to dialogues and read the item descriptions. Sometimes you are given poetry that explains the lore. Overall, while playing the game I understood what I need to do but I didn't understand why I need to do it. However, while watching YouTube videos I really enjoyed the narrative. Yes, some may say that it is bad if you must go watch YouTube videos to understand the plot. Well yeah, but you could actually pay attention and find this out on your own. It is my fault that I stopped paying attention. The information is out there. I was like, the information is provided through poetry. Nah, I'm too dumb for that, I'll watch YouTube videos. Overall, I have enjoyed watching YouTube videos about the narrative, and I didn't expect that. I intended to watch it only for my video, but I had a great time. Now, if you're like me and you have this game on your list of always delaying games, it is time, it really is that good. Now, thank you for watching, check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, Eat your vegetables and don't be naughty. See you later.